Hi guys, it's Rob here, and we're going to pick up where we left off in the last tutorial. So cloud storage is online secondary storage. A dumb terminal or video display terminal has a display screen and a keyboard, and can input and output but cannot process data. An intelligent terminal has its own memory and processor, as well as a display screen and keyboard. And latency is a lag time due to a wireless controller. Now here's the system unit diagram. So we have the ALU, right, which then goes for the arithmetic logic unit, right, instruction fetch and decode. We have the cache memory and interface to RAM, which also are instruction fetch and decode. Registers communicating with the cache memory, registers communicating with the interface RAM, and the registers communicating up here with the arithmetic logic unit. So, I mean, sorry, uh, yeah, arithmetic logic unit. So this is the system unit diagram. Now, building off of that, what do you need to build your own PC? Well, you need a keyboard and a mouse. Now, inside of the system cabinet, you're going to need a case and power supply, a CPU or processor chip, the RAM or the memory chips, right, random access memory, motherboard, the system board, right, where memory chips plug into, processor chips plug into, the motherboard attaches to the system cabinet, the power supply is connected to the system cabinet, and power supply wires connected to the motherboard. Now, storage hardware that we have is a floppy, a hard drive, zip, CD or DVD, and USB. Right, so you, you can use those. Of course, when you're building your own PC, you don't necessarily need a floppy disk. Right, some of this stuff is obviously phased out. A floppy disk, you probably would need a hard drive, but, you know, a floppy disk or, you know, a zip drive. You know, so it all depends. The, the zip drive, I believe, is phased out as well. Really, CD, DVD, and USB. And, and even CD, DVD, I mean, are we really using CDs anymore? Yeah, but I mean, you know, it, it st stuff has started to trend towards USB. And so what are, so, okay, so this, now, this marks sort of a, a not a landmark, but a, a milestone in our review sheet. Because from here on in, we're going to be going over direct practice questions. You may see these questions on tests, homework, or just in your own studies. And these are going to reinforce everything or a lot of the things that we've learned up here, right, in, in the review sheet. Supercomputers are used for breaking codes, simulations for explosions of nuclear bombs, forecasting weather, and keeping the planets in orbit. What is the leading use of computers? That's obviously email and social networking, not surprisingly. Four components of a URL, we have the web protocol, the name of the web server, the name of the directory on the web server, and the name of the file from the directory. Note that the name of the browser is not a component of the URL. A browser is something like Firefox, Internet Explorer, or Google Chrome. Note that we don't have, you know, Chrome dot something. You know, it's www dot something, for example. Now, which of the following is the fastest method of data transmission? Of those listed in the textbook question, T1 is the fastest method of data transmission. Which of the following is not an adequate rule? Flame only when necessary. All of the other ones listed in the textbook are inadequate rules. Which protocol is used to retrieve email messages from the server to your computer? Well, that's going to be POP3 or Post Office Protocol version 3. Now, ISPs that don't run their own backbones connect to an Internet backbone through an Internet exchange point. Now, the sending of a phony email that pretends to be from a credit card company or bank, luring you to a website that attempts to obtain confidential information from you, is called phishing. Now, what is a prominent network operating system? Oh, yes. Which of the following refers to the execution of two or more programs by one user almost at the same time on the same computer with one central processor? Multitasking. Which type of software can you download and duplicate without any restrictions whatsoever and without fear of legal prosecution? Shareware. Which of the following coding schemes is widely used on microcomputers? ASCII. Which of the following is not a source of data, a source data entry device? Mouse. Which of the following display standards has the highest screen resolution? QXGA. A device with a microchip that contains code numbers that can be read by a radio scanners by a radio scanners radio waves is a RFID tag. Which of the following which of these best describes the regular telephone line used in most homes today? Twisted pair cable. And which type of LAN connects all devices to a central switch? A star network. Right, and that's going to be about it for this tutorial, guys, but thanks, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next tutorial.